Hello folks, today I want to talk about Arena Breakout Season 4 and it's inevitable to talk about Call of Duty Warzone Mobile as well. That's the beauty, by the way, of being a small creator. I'm not being sponsored by any of the dev teams, I'm not being sponsored by any of the games, so I can pretty much basically say <laughs> my personal opinion and uh, don't be worried about any consequences. As you know, I've been playing Arena Breakout for the last three seasons and also during beta. And actually before jumping into S4 stuff, which by the way, I think you already know about. So there are a bunch of videos being published by other creators. So I don't really wanna go into what's new. I wanna share my opinion of what I think about the things that are new. But before I do, I'm gonna start Call of Duty Wars on mobile and uh, I'm not gonna play the game, so don't be afraid of that. But still, I, while I talk about it, I wanna have it on screen. Last summer, there was a closed beta, or actually, I'm not even sure if it was closed. I had access to one of the versions of Call of Duty. Um, and back then, after hearing that it got postponed, I was like, okay, the game is in a pretty much okay-ish state. And if Death's gonna take like one more year, then I'm sure we're gonna get something that is special and awesome. That was the time where um, Fallout 84 was pretty much hyped, so it was on the peak. And uh, that was also the time when their global launch of Arena Breakout was just about to happen. So last year, May, June, July-ish. And then after reading the news that it's gonna be December and then again it has been postponed, I was like, okay, until the point Call of Duty Warzone is going to be introduced, I'm going to stick strictly to Arena Breakout. So I did. And then I had the idea that once it's released, um, this may be the second game which I want to introduce to my channel. But, and here's the but part, but I'm, <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm concerned, guys. So yesterday I tried the game. Um, I think the graphics, I'm just going to give a high level overview okay so i think the graphics is trash it makes my red magic 8 sweaty so it means that i'm having it on balance not even doing the rice cpu and um i don't know why but it's just eating up resources and uh, you know my battery for nothing because Based on what I see on screen, I wouldn't expect this to require like a high-end phone. The thing is guys that it's not just in the gaming industry that things become boring. It's also the same for movies, for um, music and stuff. So if there is nothing new under the sun, then why would it be beloved or hyped by um, the gamers or consumers? And here the same happens. So it's a battle royale game and we have already a bunch of them and I don't really see why this would be unique. And maybe that's what I'm missing, the uniqueness. Besides the title of the game, like the fact that it's a Call of Duty game, there is nothing special I, I see here. And if this would be Bloodstrike or Special Operation Zero Alpha, um, or any not triple a development team so just a single a development team or an indie game developer i wouldn't see a big difference first impression was really bad but I, I i thought that okay i'm gonna give it a try and so i did so i played a couple of games and i still wasn't impressed i felt like that come on game show me you know why this is a call of duty title why this is so special and I got nothing. I thought that it may be the controls. I need to adjust the controls. So I did adjust the controls. And then I went into another game. And I again felt that that's it. Is this all I'm getting from Call of Duty Wars on Mobile? And uh, it seems like, yes, that's, that's it. There's nothing more in this game. It doesn't mean it's a bad game. Okay? I don't think it's a bad game. But... If this would have been released five years back, then I think that would have been a huge competition for PUBG or Free Fire. I'm not sure when Free Fire has been released anyways. Um, but in 2024, I feel like that this is just simply not enough. Consumers, gamers, people 
want more. We need something that is special and unique. And this is how I'm going to close the Call of Duty Warzone mobile discussion and start focusing on Arena Breakout Season 4. So as you know guys, I've been playing Arena Breakout since uh, Season 1, to be more precise, starting from the second round of closed beta. Then there was a third round and then there was a global launch. And uh, I still feel that this game is the best FPS game ever that has been released for mobile. And I'm not saying that because I'm sponsored. I'm not and I still feel that this is this is the game we should be focusing on and I'm going to explain why I think that the whole concept of the game makes it very unique and special right and we never ever had anything even similar before on mobile and personally I think the reason why it's not more popular than it is comes down to two reasons. One, it hasn't been developed by one of the biggest game development companies. And that matters because think of it like that. If there is a big title, like even for movies, if there's a Marvel movie, then you know it's worth watching, even if the movie is trash, right? You're going to watch that and eventually say that there were better ones. But since it's Marvel, I'm going to watch it. So same happens with game developers. If you have a title like Call of Duty, you're going to try the game just because it's Call of Duty. Arena Breakout and the team has some disadvantage here, but I think if they keep doing what they're doing, they have a good chance to grow and uh, make this game even more special and more unique. The second thing why I think Arena Breakout isn't more popular is because it's hardcore. And most of the players are more casual. They're not gonna feel satisfied after being shot five times and losing everything. And that's it. I could talk about this endlessly long, but it's hardcore and therefore it's not for everyone. So if you look at the gamers, like the spectrum of gamers, FPS gamers, there are many, many gamers who like shooting around, but then the hardcore games are like for a specific niche. And that's the second thing why I feel Arena Breakout is not going to be crazy popular. If there would be something similar where the gunfights wouldn't last for one second <laughs> or two seconds. So if you actually had to fight the enemies, maybe it would be more attention grabbing for casual players. But let's not jump ahead. Let's review S4 season 4 stuff. So here we are in the new lobby and let me remind you that this video is not about showcasing all of the new features and all of the new guns. It's more about um, just reacting to season 4 and why I feel that the new season in Arena Breakout makes me more happy than the Call of Duty Wars on mobile launch. Let me show you one thing here. Quick equip. We have the guns here which we didn't have. And now we have them. <laughs> Maybe this sounded weird, but I miss them. I, as a user, as a gamer, I was always thinking that it would be cool that I, if I could like quickly equip one of my, one of my guns. And now we have that. I didn't even have to ask for it, which validates or makes me think that developers actually play the game, test the game, gather feedback, and I think they have a pretty crowded backlog of stuff they couldn't fit in in the past. But as we proceed from one season to another, we're gonna see more and more fine tuning, polishing, and features that all lead to a better, better experience in overall. So, it's just one of many things which might be a small thing, but if you're really deep in the arena breakout, this actually makes a difference. Why? Because in between the games, you spend decent amount of time to dress up. And if we can shorten that time, then, you know, it's, it's a good feeling because we can jump from one game to another faster, which is cool. Another small change is how you select the game mode. So in the previous version, we had already a pretty crowded map 
with all of the events and simple version and lockdown. I think this new one is much more straightforward because first you select the mode you want to play, like tactical ops or lockdown, and then you see the options. It's not the other way around. And you can clearly see which are the maps you can play on normal mode. You can here see which are the ones you can play in lockdown. Or here is the hardcore version of the maps. As for the new additions, I have the assumption that we're soon going to get to the point where it's just too much. So instead of um, adding new weapons, I would want to see new attachments. For example, some new zooms would be welcome because I personally like the 2x zoom a lot, but I think it's, it's just too expensive. Even if we have 500 weapons, I'm not going to play 500 weapons. I'm going to play 20 of them. Same happened to Mobile Legends and League of Legends and all of those MOBA games where they started introducing hundreds of heroes uh, and then they just stopped because after a while it's just too much. It's like similar to when you go to the grocery store and you want to pick a ketchup or something. Why on earth do we have 16,000 different types of ketchup? I mean, I just want one and it's confusing. And it's distracting. It's like giving you headache that you need to choose between 16,000 ketchups. Uh, it's much easier to choose if you just have five or six. Let's assume we're going to have additional maps released. I think the limit is somewhere at 10. So beyond 10, it would make an impact on matchmaking because you need to remind yourself that the more maps we have and the more game modes we have, the more players are needed in order to ensure the, the queue times being still low. And after hitting like 10 maps, what I would do as the development team is I would start to extend the existing maps or revamp them or do something to kind of grab the existing players and move them back to a map that isn't that, isn't that popular. Let me briefly talk about the money part of things. So guys, game developers need to do money, okay? We just need to accept that. I'm respecting all type of players, so I don't mind if you do free to play, absolutely free to play. But in that case, please don't complain because everything you get is for free. Then we have like the second tier players who invest somewhat of money. And I think in that tier, we have those players who purchase the battle pass and then on top, eventually a composite case and then the elite pass or a combination of these or maybe two of them. So that's the second tier. Um, the third tier would be that you have everything from tier two and on top, if there is a skin which you really like, you purchase that one time thing you feel the pain, you really need to dig deep into your pocket. Um, but at the end of the day, it's like, mm, okay, I just invest once and I'm going to have that better, like better feeling, better gaming experience by having a nice skin, which is absolutely fine. We all want to be unique. The reason for buying skins is because we want to be special. We want to stand out. Then we have another tier like tier four or maybe there's even a tier five but t4 is like um players who purchase almost everything not everything but all kind of stuff and then the rails the the highest paying players who purchase everything to make sure that they are not missing out anything in the game and why did i say all of this um it's because i want to reflect on the prices on the cost of the game so in my opinion, up to tier two, where you buy the battle pass, the composite case and elite pass, that's pretty much okay and affordable by many, not everyone, but by many, but tier three, where you want to buy some skins. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like it's just too much. I mean, that's, that's lots of money. And I understand that development teams need to generate money. But uh, I would be happier if the skins, like the weapon skins and the clothes and gloves and such would cost approximately 50% of what they currently cost. I feel that the overall income of the development team would be even more than what it is now. This is all just speculation and assumption. 
I would be happy to hear your opinion. So I don't actually know how much income they generate, but if the weapons would cost 50% less, I would purchase some of them. So what I'm trying to get to is that the game needs to be sustainable. So the servers cost money, everything costs money, the development team costs money, the creative teams, everything costs money. And in order to make a game sustainable, there needs to be a uh, consistent income. So if I would be Arena Breakout, I would reconsider the cost of the skins. Maybe instead of doing a harsh change, maybe I would start introducing some discounts and then going forward in season five, six, slightly start lowering the prices to make it affordable for more players. If you like the game, you also need to think about its future and we need to pay some money or somebody needs to pay money to make it uh, sustainable. Otherwise, you know, it's just a matter of time until it gets shut down. Hopefully it's not gonna happen with Arena Breakout ever. So I'm super happy about season four, even though we are not getting like a new map or such, I'm still happy because every time we have a new season, there are a couple of things you can do. And in this game, you actually can decide what you want to focus on. You can focus on your storage value. You can dedicate a whole season to hit a specific storage value, like 10 million, 20 million, 50 million or whatever. You can also focus on rank points, like you want to become master, ace, legend, whatever. You can focus on achievements and disregard everything else. It's really just up to you how you want to play this game. In most of the other games, there's just one, one direction, one goal, and you don't have the option to choose. In Arena Breakout, it can happen that there are two players, two very high-end players, and they never meet because one of them is focusing on farm, lockdown, or hardcore version or whatever, with turmoils in squad mode, and then there's another player who is focusing on solo, armory, and achievements. And those players are never gonna meet. They are playing the same game and they are getting a nice experience, but you know, they are doing different type of things, which in my opinion is pretty cool. So to summarize things, I'm super happy that we're gonna constantly get new stuff because every time something new happens, then existing games and developers also need to do something. It's not a coincidence that uh, on the 21st of March, we got a free M4 and a bunch of stuff is happening in Arena Breakout as well. They wanna compensate that to ensure that players are not just hopping over to Call of Duty. But I'm happy that we have new stuff because then there's a like a competition. Um, I'm also looking forward to Valorant Mobile and uh, Rainbow Six Mobile. Definitely gonna try those. But based on what I saw, Call of Duty Warzone Mobile didn't convince me. It doesn't mean that I'm not gonna play the game or put in some hours or eventually even publish some videos. But for now, the winner for me is definitely Arena Breakout hit that subscribe button and like the video if you are already subscribed and thank you by the way for all the support i'm getting um feel free to use the comment section to share your thoughts with me or with the community and uh guys we just need sometimes variety so sorry for not giving you like a gameplay video or how to get rich or guide or whatever um you know sometimes i'm enjoying just sharing my opinion thank you for your attention See you next time. Shady out. Bye.